Welcome everyone to the fourth in our series of our Springback Talks. This series is 10 free webinars to support you and your craft business in 2021 and beyond. These have been created by the Crafts Council and funded by Crafting Europe. For those of you joining us from the Ukraine today, we have the Ukrainian interpretation. We will be going to Q&A later on, so any questions that you may have throughout this webinar, please use the Q&A function. Before I introduce our guest today, Carl Earl Ockram, writer and director, and he's a founder of his indie production company, Little Bobbin Films, Boffin film, sorry. Um, I'm going to set a context of why video is your friend in relation to the rest of your craft business. The rationale. Why do we need video content? That is quite a big sweeping statement. In this digital world, we are faced with constant visual stimulation and it's getting harder to get noticed. We are faced with potentials of smaller budgets, little time. So how can we overcome this? Filmed content can bring your craft business to life and can offer you so many options for bringing people into your craft business world. Research. We are all familiar with TikTok now, which now boasts 689 million users worldwide, 100 million from Europe alone, with predicted overall growth of 25% in three years time. And for the UK, 75% growth. That's pretty amazing. Furniture designer, Abdullah Nafisi has grown his TikTok following by 300% in just one year. Though remember, Instagram remains ever popular. Yes, it is getting saturated, but with a high percentage of users, still this is a viable platform. If you missed our talk on getting the most out of Instagram, please do view this on our Crafts Council YouTube channel. Artist Laura Matthews, has achieved great success in using Instagram. And both her and Abdullah have done this by using consistent, engaging filmed content. Marketing. Wherever you are producing, whenever, sorry, you are producing new content, do ask yourself, does this inspire me? Share content you are proud of. Better to do this than just sharing content for the sake of it. The structure. To create film content, what are your options? Soon we're gonna hear from Carl, who's going to share some real juicy insights. But first of all, think about other things either side of this. First of all, what platform you want to share it on? And also, what are the editing options available to you? And do you need to potentially upskill? Choose what is right for you and your craft business, not just what everybody else is doing. The planning. Always have a plan in place. And I always say have planning as a part of your regular business structure. Look ahead and allow yourself time to do things well. Connections. Who is your content aimed at? Refer to our first two talks. The first on how to identify brand values so you know what you want to say. The second, how to identify your customers so you know who you want to say this to. The next step is the mechanism to get their attention, whether social media, direct messages, newsletters, emails or your website, try and be specific in your connections so that you have the best chance in achieving the outcomes you intend. 
finally, the future. Two things to consider here. First, the long-term goals for your business and how film content can help you achieve these goals. Second, consider when you need to bring in a professional. Have a plan for this, both in marketing and a financial plan. I'm going to refer to designer Rishi Thornhill, founder of Accionautia, who invested in professional filmed content to launch his crowdfunding campaign, the Ultimate Adventure Shorts. It was so successful, he achieved his target within 24 hours and way beyond that. How did he do this? By knowing what he wanted to achieve, when he wanted to achieve it, and when to bring in the professionals. So with that in mind, I am going to bring in our professional today, Carl L. Ockram, who will be sharing his insights into how to make video your friends. Over to you, Carl. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, hope you can hear me okay. Um, so I'm Carl. Um, thanks for the introduction, Caroline. Um, so yeah, so a quick intro about me. So I'm a, I'm a London-based um, British Ghanaian uh, writer and director. Uh, I love storytelling, um, getting under the, uh, under the skin of characters, that sort of thing as well. You know, I, I work in documentaries and fashion, music films and narrative films and promo. Uh, I, you know, I've worked in video for quite a while. I studied video production at university. Um, uh, in 2020, I was fortunate enough to be made um, a member of the BFI Network and Staff and Crew cohort. So I'm really passionate about sort of uh, telling uh, really interesting stories on video. Um, and also socially conscious stories. All to say that there is, although I've got this sort of um, real passion for film, um, there isn't one correct right way to do any of this. These are just some tips and tricks to sort of help you on your way. Um, we're not going to sort of be making um, Steven Spielberg's or, or Chloe Zhao's or Barry Jenkins's out of you, uh, but hopefully we'll be able to um, sort of get some, 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 some skills to you guys so, um, so you can your needs. So not to repeat a bit about what uh, a bit of what Caroline has just mentioned, but um, you know the, the question you know exists of course is why video? I personally see it that it's all about engagement. It's engagement with your with your audience, people you know, and potential customers of course. Um, people who may sort of buy into you as a as a brand and and also um, potential collaborators as well, people you may want to work with in your, in your craft as well in, in the future. Um, so without further ado, let's dig into sort of how we sort of go about this. There, always the most important thing is, is, um, is planning, is knowing exactly what you want to achieve. Um, and the more planning you get, you, you put in initially, the better you'll um, you'll be able to make a decent video. So think about these sorts of questions before you start. Really think about what you want to achieve in the video. Is it a how-to? Is it just a little video to showcase your work as almost like a little sort of portfolio? Uh, is it a piece of content to inform viewers who you are as a person, as a creative person? Um, now, and 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 where do you, and think about other things as well, more practical sort of technical things, like where you want to do it. Do you want to do it in a location that represents you as a maker? Um, I mean, I'd advise that, but it might not be sort of ideal. There may be interruptions, uh, sound considerations as well. So really, sort of stop and think about these sorts of points before you before you start. Um, again, I would advise that. There may be occasions where you may want to do any or all of these different types of videos. For example, if you want to sort of show a how-to, that might be quite good to sort of basically uh, let viewers, people out there, uh, into your world of your making process, uh, and that could be quite sort of key for engagement. Um, again, just a video just showcasing your work as a finished product could be quite good again sort of 
getting drawing people in if you may be interested in sort of either collaborating with you or purchasing your work if you're selling it. Um, think about other things as well when you're planning out. Uh, how much time you actually have to spend to, um, how much time you have to spend in terms of making the video, but also how much money you have to spend. So that everyone has a phone. Um, um, and so your phone will have some capability of, of capturing something half decent. But you may want to upgrade on that, or you may want to have add some add-ons to it, sort of additional sound. We'll talk about some of these things later. Um, and as Caroline alluded to earlier as well, there may be a point where you um, hire in someone. Again, we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Um, in the planning process, I think one of the most important things is to sort of, excuse me, plan out the actual craft activity thoroughly. So you don't have to worry about both the craft that you're doing and the filming of the craft. Uh, the, the craft that you're doing may be second nature to you because that is what you do. But if video isn't second nature to you, it might be a bit of a tall order to think, okay, I've got to make this as I normally would do, but I've got to also video it myself. It's something that I <laughs> would struggle with personally without planning it. So I think it's one of the most important things to really have a real solid idea of what you're going to make or how you're going, what you're going to craft. So that if the video side of things isn't second nature to you, you can have that technical part of your brain ticking away, thinking, okay, I have to sort of make sure that um, I'm capturing this properly. Uh, in the planning as well, another thing to keep in mind is um, being informative. Um, because, for example, if you're making something and you want to, it's a sort of how to, for example, you want to make sure that you're being quite clear and concise about the making process. So you're only videoing things or, or editing down the content that you've captured to the stages that are most important. Um, so again, it, think of any cookery show you've seen, you know, they could show you literally the whole process uh, in its entirety, or they show, okay, here's me now and eating this, this piece of food or whatever, and, and here's it being fried or whatever else and so on. So you cut out the stuff you don't need is what I'm trying to say. So, so think about the information you're trying to put across and think about the best way to tell that and the most efficient way. Um, as, as we've all sort of subject to, everyone's got a shorter attention span these days. So to really consider that in terms of, okay, writing out the steps of what is really key and important to show. Um, thinking about authenticity as well and personality, I think is quite important. People who watch content either engaged by something that is really entertaining, sort of funny, or, or feels real and authentic. Um, sometimes that's kind of hard to quantify, but I think the more, the more authentic you can be, the more of yourself you can be, the, the better your, your work. Um, I, I find, I really believe in that. I really feel that, you know, no matter what sort of area you're in, whether it's whatever craft you're in, the, your authenticity not only comes through in your work, of course, but also in how you put that across. So try and consider that. It's, it's, it's tricky to sort of think about all of those different things, but the planning process is really key to sort of having a good production process. Um, once the planning is done, do so you have an idea of what you're going to put across and what you're going to video. We, we move into the pre-production phase of, of, of the shoot. So with that, you, uh, you, you um, will be thinking about, excuse the um, noise, by the way, so to, uh, to, to the so bit of alarm, but hopefully it'll be fine. Anyway, so, um, so with the pre-production, you'll be thinking about the kits that you'll be using. So as we mentioned before, you, this is you know for, for very 
low budget sort of DIY um, video production. So the best thing to use would be your phone. Thankfully, these days, um, video content. Um, cameras on phones are, are are pretty pretty spectacular, so you shouldn't have a problem with that. The other things that you do need to consider, though, are the other peripherals around the video production. So the sound, for example, um, can you do you have access to the well, to another microphone that can record better sound? Um, so think about what other kit might be available to you, or if not, um, there are add-ons that you can purchase. Again, that's going a step back in the planning process, thinking about okay, how much money do I want to put towards this particular video that you're making? So thinking about the sound, thinking about um, I mean how what sound is necessary as well for the video. Because, for example, you may not want to, let's say it's a sort of how-to and you're, and you're showing the making of something. You might, necessarily, you might not necessarily want or need to have you dictating over what you're doing. That could be quite simply text on screen. So think about that. Um, you, you may also, if you are you know, speaking over the video while, you, while, you're, um, while you're recording, uh, you may need to sort of use subtitles as well um, for accessibility. So accessibility, of course, is very important. I know that there are some um, programs, uh, editing programs, we'll come to that later, that um, that have a, an automated sort of system, and, and YouTube does that as well as an option. But do think about that as well. And think about how you're speaking, if you're speaking clearly and concisely. Again, it goes back to that being informative and efficient in what you're saying and how you're saying it. Um, while not, of course, losing your personality and who you are uh, and being engaging in what you're saying. Um, lighting is really important. Lighting is essential. It's, it's, it's so, it's, th these two, sound and lighting, are two of the things that get sort of overlooked in terms of um, the you know, video production generally for, for those who aren't professionals. Natural light is always handy and best. I mean, I've got a big window here, for example, um, but I've got another little light here. Um, it's not the best because it's a, it's a Zoom chat, but it's, it's, you know, it's a bit darker on the side of the room, so I'm using, I'm using this little light here just to highlight the side of my face. And it's the same for any sort of video that you're putting across. What is key and important in the image that you're, that you're, that you're, that you're shooting? Um, where, think about the light source, where is it coming from? Um, if it's a sunny day, what time of the day are you starting to record? Is the light consistent? Will, you know, will it be cloudy and rainy at some point in the day? Um, yeah, just have, a, have an idea as to um, where the light is coming from. You might be in a, in a location um, where you don't have access to natural light. In that case, um, there are you know, lamps and lights that you can sort of purchase. There are some more specific video production lights. Um, I can sort of drop a couple of links to those um, at some point that are relatively cost effective, but um, they're called LED lights basically. So just a sort of heads up before we sort of go there. And so they're relatively cost effective, but again, um, there is uh, the most important thing is to think about the item that you're making, is it lit well enough? Are you creating a shadow by being in a shot yourself? Can the light be positioned in a way to avoid shadows on, on the item that you're focusing on? Um, grip, or in other words, like you know, stands and um, tripods and so on. There are, again, cost-effective tripods out there. Alluding again earlier to what I said about sort of keeping in mind that you are doing several things at once, that you're, you're being a maker, <laughs> but you're also um, trying to video this thing. Um, you want as hassle-free a kind of setup as possible. So um, thinking of a decent tripod that, can, that you can position your camera or something in a, in a decent position that you can capture the, the, uh, the item 
uh, and yourself, of course, if you think you might need to have yourself in there is important. So again, thinking about where that stand is and where it can be positioned to make sure that you are capturing what's important without, um, without interrupting the making process. Um, there are occasions, of course, where you might want to do it very handheld, very sort of embracing the fact that it's 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 uh, it's you yourself DIYing it, um, doing it yourself, and in that regard, you want to just sort of again make sure that whatever, however you're sort of holding the camera and so on, feels feels okay in terms of the the edit that is the the work that you're doing. But you know, I'm guessing if you were sort of handling and holding it with your hand, it wouldn't be a kind of how to because of course you couldn't because you got to be asked. Um, so, so yeah, so, so so consider that consider locations and where you're putting um, your, your 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 setup. Again, thinking of the location as well. Um, a lot of you might be working in studios. Um, studios can be, of course, noisy, messy, whatever. There may be others who are working there as well. So, uh, and of course, it all links into a lot of these areas linking to each other. So, again, thinking of the location will also make you think, okay, so I can work in a studio, but on this date, so I know that people might be working, they're coming in um, and interrupting my, my, um, my process. So planning ahead, um, knowing that you've got this particular space booked at a certain time, there aren't going to be crazy noises, unlike me with the alarm earlier. Um, um, there are things that will, that will pop up, no doubt, and we'll talk about that in a second. But yeah, having a real idea as to where, what the location is, does the location represent you as a maker and what you're also making? So keep that in mind as well, because you don't want to make, you don't want the location to feel incongruous to, to what you're doing. Um, and you also don't want it to be too distracting. Again, these, might sound quite abstract but it's once you start thinking about it and have that knowledge in your mind of like oh wait a minute let me think about this is this going to be distracting or not um it will at least avoid help you avoid certain pitfalls that might happen later so, so that's kind of a, a mini sort of overview of the of the pre-production process it's 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 just really really considering all of the things you need to do, what you're trying to do, why you're trying to do it, how much funds you have available to do that, um, the locations, the lighting, and so on you have to to create this. Um, because once you've once you've planned it all, it, it makes the production process so much easier. It's it's literally one of the. It can be the most sort of, I wouldn't say boring, but the most um, yeah, the drawn out sort of stages of the production process but yeah it's 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 kind of key um because once you've once you sort of planned the shoot properly and know exactly what you're trying to achieve it just makes the whole process so much better um trust me on that one um so once you know what you're doing you know you've got your camera you've got your your, your little microphone um you've got your light set up you know what you set you know what your setup is you know how many hours you're going to be filming for you know, no one's going to interrupt your location at the time. You've got your lighting set up and so on. Um, this is a for, sort of, for example, for a how-to. Uh, so you're doing it in your studio and all that stuff. Once you've got it all set up, it's on to production. Um, now, one thing I, I always like to keep in mind is that all video is storytelling, even a, even a dull how-to, but it shouldn't be dull. Um, and with storytelling, you have your beginning, you have your middle, you have your end. So in the beginning of, some, of something that could be arguably dry, like a how-to, um, you want to make it, as, of course, as engaging as, engaging as possible. So you want to hook the, the audience in at the beginning, let them know what they're about to, what they're about to see, but let them know in a way that they don't want to turn away. So... I'm not saying do a song and dance or anything but unless you want to but um but yeah just really really make sure that it, what you how you start the video 
is snappy, is interesting. People know what they're about to see. Um, it's again authentic and and you, very much you in terms of who you are and, and your identity and how you how you come across to your peers and audience. So yeah, have a real in, have a real idea as to how you're going to intro your piece. Um, this does bleed into the pre-production, but it's just kind of important to sort of think about in the production process as well. Um, so the so the, the the beginning the intro may in the edit when she's finished might involve putting a shot of the final thing that you're making at the beginning of the video so people know that oh wow that's a cool um, chair that's been made um, and then you then they hooked and then they're in um, and be and be interesting try and be as as interesting as possible with that we'll come to that in a second but but yeah so once you Talk about the beginning, think about the middle. The middle, of course, is just the, the actual the meat of the piece, I guess, the, 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 um, the, the information, the, the steps of how to, whatever, for example. But again, think of trying to make it as engaging as possible. What you don't want, again, is it to feel very methodical and, and dry. Think about the fact that, okay, someone's going to be watching this. I want to, make it as clear and concise as possible, but also as engaging as possible. So that uh, we'll, we'll come on to um, certain aspects of ways to do that in a second, but um, but yeah, bear that in mind in that that's the main sort of part of the of the piece. People need to know it needs to it needs to be informative ultimately. Uh, otherwise it's like, oh that was interesting, but I didn't understand it. So you don't want that. And at the end, of course, is the conclusion. And in, in the conclusion, at the end of your video, of course, could be a, um, a call to action. Um, by call to action, it could be um, what that means is a, a kind of, um, this, is, this is my final piece. I hope you liked it. But, um, and if you click on this link here, you can see more and potentially buy. So it's a way of wrapping up and also giving your audience an instruction, something to do afterwards. So not only are you, it's more bang for your buck, it's, it's giving either video more of a purpose than just being a simple how-to. It could be something like, you know, click on more, I've done more of these videos, so check out the links below, or um, it could be just something quite quite nice and like, hey, you can do this too. And people are will be, will be kind of, engaged and motivated by that. Um, it could be a sort of, I mean, this is a, almost a, a kind of a stereotypical kind of phrase at the end of videos online, but it could be a shit, please share this and like and subscribe, um, which um, if you're looking to do more and more videos could be quite important. Um, so yeah, think about how you want to end it and how you want to really engage with the audience once they've finished the video. Um, I might have mentioned this before, but um, filmmaking is a technical craft, but it's also quite an artistic endeavor. So when thinking about that, um, I try and sort of consider, there's, a, there's a, again, a bunch of things that we've kind of touched on before in terms of the pre-production, but it's things that you'll think that you'll realize when you're, I say on set, but when you are actually filming the thing. So framing is key. So think about what's important in the shot. Like now, you know, for example, this is just me. <laughs> That's what you can see. Uh, there's not that much else going on in this room. But if I were doing something else, you know, making something over here, I might want to frame it differently or so on. So think about what is important in the shot. Um, how wide you want the shot to be. Um, do you want it to be to, to be quite wide to show the whole environment or do you need to hone in um, and focus on the item that's being made so really think about what's being what's being shot and where and how. Um, again I know we've talked about audio briefly before but another thing to think about is that sort of what's the most important thing to hear if you're capturing sound as you're as you're making what's the most important thing to hear and so on um, 
if they don't need to hear you speak, do they need to hear the sound of the making process? There might be something quite specific about the, the, the audio that you want to capture. So consider that and think about that as well. Um, we talked about light before, but again, so this is once you once you're there and you set up and you think it's all good, you might realise that oh, actually the light isn't what I wanted, or it's not really doing it justice. You might think, you know what, it might be better for me to film this outside or get another lamp, whatever it may be. So the beautiful thing about this is that you're doing it yourself. You, so you have control. You can be, you can watch it and or you watch it on your screen and be like, watch it, watch the playback and be like, mm, you know what? I don't really think that this is doing it justice. So think about that. You might also want to just, again, sort of leads back into the pre-production, but you might want to watch other videos that are like the one that you're trying to make and see how the makers have made their video and think, okay, they've used this angle here or they've, they've uh, shot it from uh, in this way or whatever. So think about how, um, how you can sort of borrow other techniques that have already been done, tried and tested, because you're not trying to reinvent the wheel. You're not trying to, again, as we talked about it earlier, but we're not trying to be the next best filmmaker. You're just trying to capture something interesting to up your craft um, to, to the audience. So think about that. Um, again, going back to, to the location, have you thought about the best use of the space? Um, you again, so let's say you've set up and everything and you and you started filming and you're like, do you know what? I don't have enough space to move, maneuver and move here. You might think that there's actually a better way because you might traditionally always use a certain table because, oh, this is the table I use, so this is what I want. This is where I'll be filming it. But that might not, that might not necessarily be the best place for filming um, your, 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 your craft. So you might want to change it up and be like, well, even though I always use this table to do this work, I'm actually going to move it to somewhere else, which serves my filming of the process better. So again, think about that. Um, when, you're, when you're filming, of course, um, have you previously blocked, blocked through and rehearsed the movement and activities of what you're doing? Because, for example, you might think to yourself, oh, yeah, I'll just do this for a couple of hours or whatever, because that's how long the process takes. But you don't want to run out of battery or whatever, so or on, on your camera. So just block through the process, knowing how much you need to do beforehand. I mean, of course, you'll be making something that you've almost definitely done before. So you'll have an idea and know how long it takes and so on. So, so keep that in mind. Um, Again, we've talked about artistry and authenticity already. Authenticity, if I can say that right. But are you being as so are you, with that in mind, are you being as dynamic and as interesting as possible in your framing, in your camera moves? I mean, this is going a bit sort of taking it to the next level, but for example, a static shot might be perfect for what you're doing. But once you've taken that static shot, do you want to um, uh, take another shot where you're moving the camera around the item that you've made to give, to make it a bit more dynamic. Again, it's all about feeding into um, what the audience sees and how engaged they'll be. Um, yeah, and, I've got, and with that in mind with the audience, just keep in mind when you're filming, um, think about your audience, think about who will be watching it and, and what can be done to appeal to them more. That might include um, talking to talking about like things that they that they may be engaged with. So, like for example, you might mention if it's a particular if you're talking to a set of um, makers who work in ceramics, for example, and that's something that they and there's a there's an element of of the ceramic, the ceramic sort of making process that only people in that might know. Engage with that. Have fun with it. Um, keep in mind that you know that it's you, that you're a human being and you're talking to other humans and and keep that 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 sort of personal sort of approach there because I think that's kind of kind of important. 
Um, yeah, just always make, keep in mind when you're when you're uh, when you're in the filming process. You know, just remember sort of what's the purpose and so on. Um, what impression do you think the viewers who watch it should get? Um, uh, make sure that you you're mirroring the messaging of the video to the content. So so there's a kind of a synergy between what you're making and your own identity and your own sort of personality. Um, yeah, and just try and get the most out of every shoot. Um, so there's a point that I kind of actually left out in um, in the planning process, but um, Caroline alluded to this. You have to think about where you want to publish it. Is it on Instagram stories? Is it going to be on YouTube? Where it goes has a big impact as to the length of the thing that you're making, of course, because if it's like on TikTok or whatever, you know, it's going to be quite a much shorter thing. YouTube, of course, with stories, you can make it much longer, but, and that can actually be quite fun if you are trying to make sure people watch it all, because each 15 seconds sort of break could, if you're really, really, really good at timing, could end with something that makes the audience want to tap on to the next segment of the story. Very, really hard to do, but could be quite fun. You could have fun with that format. If it's on YouTube, of course, you know, it, it, there's, you know, unlimited or whatever. So think about where it's going, because where it's going has an impact as to the sort of video you're making. And it also has an impact on to the, uh, the aspect ratio. Of course. So um, again, really consider Okay, so I'm, I know that most of my audience are on TikTok or, or are on Instagram. I want this for Instagram stories. So you know, therefore, that it's going to be portrait. Or well, it should be portrait, really, just for your, just for ease. Ultimately, think about, think about like, you know, obviously most of us consume, you know, this sort of content on our phones, but some audience, you know, some users may, may prefer a YouTube link. So really think about the convenience for the viewer, you, you know, yes, if I'm using watching it on my phone, I can easily turn it landscape, but there's a, there's a, almost a kind of, uh, almost a disconnect that, that the audience, you don't want the audience to have, you want, you want it to be as easy and, and, and smooth um, and organic as possible for them. Um, so yeah, so just basically really think about like, oh, okay, this is going on YouTube, so I'm going to make it uh, a landscape, and it's no, it's for Instagram stories, so I'm going to make it for that. If, if you are going to embrace the kind of, and I do recommend this really for, for lower budget videos that you're doing yourself, and you're not trying to pretend that a higher end company or, or filmmaker has made it, and you're, you know you're doing it yourself, and you're embracing the fact that you're doing it yourself. Um, I would veer to doing it a uh, portrait. So you you are embracing the fact that it is user generated, as in like it's made by you, and uh, the audience will almost engage with it more because they're like, oh, this, this maker is doing it themselves and they've shown it. So I, so organically, my mind my mind goes to oh, so therefore it should be portrait. So this is no hard and fast rule, not in the slightest, but it feels like that feels like a more organic way of telling the story of what you're putting across you're telling a story that this is you as a maker putting stuff out there and therefore any steps that kind of block that authenticity and that that narrative that story kind of shift away from the the emotional connection that the viewer might ha have when watching so personally, I would make it for this sort of content, but not hard and fast at all. Um, so you would have made your plan, you would have blocked out and everything and you're shooting and it's all going fine, but inevitably um, things go wrong, you know, making videos is half of, it, half of it is problem solving. So um, so for anything that comes up, just maybe maybe embrace, <laughs> this is a bit, sounds a bit weird sometimes, but there is a, there's a school of thought that maybe if you are showing that it is an authentic kind of piece of content that you're making, maybe you can embrace the mistakes that might happen when you're making 
said said piece of craft. Um, it all depends, of course. If it literally melts down and starts a fire, then just please call call the fire brigade. Don't stand in, in the flames and say, "Oh, this is nice." But um, but um, yeah, there is an argument that oh, this 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 didn't work out like a like like a what I expected or wanted. But hey, this happens when when they when doing this process. So you can almost embrace that kind of potential issue that might might might, might happen. It all depends. And it's all to your taste and sensibility. You might think, no, I don't want any sort of, I want to keep it quite very, very clean and very clear and concise and, and, and that's completely fine. But I, I again, I think I, I'm thinking about the engagement that you, you your viewers might have. So, and they will want to identify with a real person for the most part. So once you've shot it, um you've planned of course you shot it a couple of things might have gone wrong fine you dealt with them and you've got your your stuff on your phone and you, you, you your content your, your video on your phone that comes to post-production um most most phones have an internal kind of trimming editing little mini editing sort of bit of software in there um if not there's iMovie um that's a good place to start um, for the, um, that's industry, industry now, and I know it's Apple only. I think that it actually is on Windows as well. So I, I know it's quite good. For the most, for the more advanced of you or those who might have technical know-how, there's Adobe Premiere Rush, which is a, which is, Premiere is like an industry standard editing software. And Premiere Rush is, I think, a free version of editing of, of Premiere for your phone. So, I believe that's free, so I'd have to double check that. But um, you can also check out sort of, uh, I think DaVinci Resolve is another one. Th there are there are several, to be fair. Um, it's not something that I know lots on, because I, you know, of course, we use the, the full Adobe Premiere versions. But yeah, just know that, you know, just basically see what works for you. But I definitely know that um, uh, iMovie is definitely one of those that is, loved for years and, and as is uh, Adobe Premiere Rush and DaVinci Resolve. So they're three, but like, like I said, the other two are quite technical, so you have to be quite confident with the computer processes. Um, but this also bleeds into back into the production process. With all of these stages, the more you, the more work you do in the first uh, area, the easier the next stage is. It, it's one of those. So if you keep your shoots as simple and not too, uh, you're not too complicated, um, especially if you're not too confident in editing, it can make your life so much easier. It's like, okay, I'm just going to keep on rolling and just, um, and just make this thing. And then I'll be a little bit at the beginning, a little bit at the end and then done. And then you know that you're not going to have to worry too much about whatever else is happening. But um, yeah, also, you could, this is where you might be confident enough on videoing with a phone, you know, you've planned it and so on, but editing is just like above, uh, over your head. That might be a stage where you collaborate with a, a friend, another sort of creative, someone who, who might be a bit more au okay with editing and so on. Um, but yeah, um, they may want to take, you, may, you might want to be like, okay, look, I'll film for you if you edit for me and so have that conversation see who else is out there to help to help you if that's not an area that you're confident in um yeah um again there, there, there are sadly we don't have a lot of time either because this is you know, trying to squeeze in the whole production process into a one chat but um keep in mind where you want to this gets quite technical so for those of you who might want to switch off don't don't worry about it, this will only be a couple of sentences, but keep in mind where you want to put it because there are, forgive me if this is sort of teaching you sort of basics, but there are export settings uh, in terms of the best settings for different platforms. This is something you just might need to Google. What are the best export settings for Instagram stories or for YouTube? Um, and so you want the highest quality on the, on the particular platform. So to keep that in mind as well. Um, 
Um, and when you post it online, finally, sort of, again, this is not an area that is more probably was covered in the Instagram chat, maybe, but hashtags and so on help as well. So keep that in mind. A couple of final thoughts. Um, this is, it's some of these final thoughts are, you know, very subjective, but just keep that in mind. Um, so you are, you are your brand. So remember that in your video and decide, um, and keep that in mind because you'll put whatever video you're putting out represents you as a maker. So, so, so yeah, keep that in mind, you know, people will either engage, think to yourself, think to themselves, oh, okay, I like their work, but this video was a bit weird or ropey or dry and I'm not engaged as much anymore. So really consider that, that the video that you're putting out represents you. Um, so, so obvious, but sometimes it can be quite, you might forget or not really realize, oh, it's a video people understand, will appreciate that, but little things go a long way. So being as authentic as possible is really, really key. Um, yeah, I mean, again, this is subjective, but I would personally, if a maker is putting a video out there, I would rather see a kind of slapdashy kind of very not so polished but authentic video than um, a glossy but soulless video that's just again a personal preference but um so think about who your audience is and what you think they would like while also being true to yourself as, as, a, as a as a creative so quickly so then like, again it's a bit of a minefield sometimes again i alluded to this earlier but help ask for help from friends um, you know, filmmaking is one of those art forms, again, that can be as technical as it is artistic. Um, there is a lot to think about, you know, film, you know, so, you know, we've talked about so much and, and we've only scratched the surface really of kind of giving you a weird bit of an overview as opposed to specifics and so on. Um, so again, collaborate with other creatives and other friends, um, of course, in the COVID safe environment and in the COVID safe way. Um, and again, um, I think at the top of the chat, um, Caroline alluded to this, um, you know, the budget is, is key, you know, filmmakers isn't, isn't just something you can just, and it's something you can just pick up, everyone's got a phone, but depending on what you're trying to put across and what you're trying to make, every, you know, with all of these things, it's all come down to budget and time and so on, of course, of that, and, and art and talent as well. So if you feel that video is essential to your brand, um, uh, it might be possible that, you know, that self-made sort of thing alone won't do. Self-made thing might be a nice little thing for stories, but it might not be the ideal thing to put, a, to, to have as a kind of piece of content to say, this is my brand, this is who I am, this is what we do. So recognize that it might be, you know, prudent and it might be just the, the, the best thing to just put some money aside to make a decent video that represents you best. Um, so that's where you get a professional in. As with any, as with any craft, there may be stages where it's like, look, okay, this is video for your, for doing it yourself. It's good for certain practices, stories, showing a little, showing a bit of a behind the scenes of your craft and so on. Really a flavour of who you are, but to do a a glossy and soulful piece of content from a professional might be the best way. So. Again, it really depends as to what you're trying to do and how you're trying to achieve it. Um, I've talked for a very long time. Um, I hope that all made sense. Um, I know that there, it was. I know it was a bit of an overview. There are links of, of. I could suggest a couple of sort of specific bits of. of I'll put them. I'll put them in a chat maybe later. Um, of bits of kit that I know might be good for sort of uh, mic uh, microphones for your phone or. Uh, add on lenses for your phone, decent like, lighting as well, and and and, and tripod stands and so on. So yeah, so we can talk about that. But but really, that it's it's the most important thing is really being clued up in your own self as to what you're trying to achieve and the best way to achieve it. And that comes with planning, doing research, seeing what works best, uh, what has worked best for others as well, and and trying to do the, the, the best that you can and calling on help if you need it. Uh, I hope that really helped. Um, and yeah, um, thanks, for, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, thank you.
That was brilliant, Carl. Thank you so much. Uh, so much content there and really nicely laid out around the why, the pre-production, production, post-production. Post I love the fact you brought in storytelling, the middle <laughs> and the, the end, because it, it's something that I think a lot of uh, makers forget when they're in the moment. Absolutely, um, yeah. So yeah, the, the storytelling is, is definitely key. Um, I'm going to bring my colleague Tanvi in now. I know she's got some questions and we do have some time for questions. So Tanvi, what's what's first up? Yeah, actually, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Carl, for your talk. Um, there was some great tips and we will uh, probably email everybody with the links that we mentioned about supplies because there's been quite a few about supplies. Um, so following on from that last point we just made, um, I'll start with this one. What are the other ways that do you think that makers could tell stories other than showing how they make their work because there's been some concerns about people copying processes things like that. um per personally i think that what would be engaging is why you do what you do so it, it's sort of a video that that kind of that might be quite short and sweet but kind of gives a little insight as to who you are and what you're about could be quite an interesting, engaging way to be like, oh, okay, this is who I am. I like to make this because of X, Y, and Z, this reason. That in itself kind of is informative. It's interesting. Again, I'm not saying, you know, you have to you know, do, a, do a dance or whatever, but if you can make it very you, I just find that, I just find that people, people engage with people. Um, and so, I think that that is the that's kind of where my mind would go. But that, look, hey, there, there are lots of different or there'll be lots of different takes as to what what constitutes uh, uh, an engaging piece of piece of content for, from a maker. So um, but that's where I would sort of start off with. It's like, oh, okay, um, yeah, what can I what can I show on, on a daily? Like where I source my materials from, where I so it's it, it really just really think a step take a step back for a second i think to yourself okay i know that i do this random thing that i've never really talked about before but people might be like oh i do that too i, I go get my materials from this location or i do this every morning because it's part of my process i don't know it could be just really just really engaging and, and really authentic you know it i use that phrase a lot and apologies for it but that authenticity i think is is kind of key yeah definitely I was, I was just going to add to that I, I think if you're kind of worried about introducing yourself maybe trying to do it with a friend having a, just a general chat because they could put you at ease and um, which is when you're trying to do things on it by yourself can always be a bit of a challenge so yeah that might be something to to consider yeah um oh thank you um we'll move on to another one which was um what would you recommend as an upgrade from a phone um to capture footage so that's the next step. Wow, that, I mean, that's a it's a it's a piece of string question in terms of like um, how much money you have. So it all comes down to okay. Once you once you once you take that step up, there are DSLRs basically, uh, um, the DSLRs that you know from Canon and Sony um, for that are in the. I mean, you can get a secondhand one or whatever. I'm, I'm uh, for some reason I'm, I'm kind of like I almost don't want to ask you to start going down that road unless you are really going to take the video making part of the process quite really seriously. Because once you start putting that sort of money in, it might be more cost effective to just get a professional. In. It depends as to what how far you want to take it. Um, but, I mean, there are there are a handful that I could sort of suggest. Which I can, I'll happily sort of, um, with regards to sort of recommendations of particular bits of kit, I'll happily sort of send that later. But I almost, I'm adverse to kind of start going down that road of like, okay, get this camera for, you know, at this level, because I think that you might need to start maybe even doing a, maybe a mini online course or something just to sort of know that you're, the money that you're investing is worth it. Because half of it isn't the tool, isn't the tool, it's the whole phrase, it's not the tools, it's the, what's the phrase, tools or farmer or something, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but 
Yeah. So, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure one of you will, 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 will correct me on it. But yeah, it's, it's, you don't want to, if you haven't thought about exactly all of the processes, because half of it isn't even just in the camera that you get, it's the lenses. Because once you take that step up, it's like the lenses that you use. And um, so, yeah, so that is, that's kind of why I've stuck to the phones for now. But, um, but yeah, I, I could, I could happily sort of give a list of a couple of, a yeah. sort of baseline yeah. hit, hit list. Oh, I, I think that that's that's really good advice because like you say once you you're investing in the equipment suddenly then there's there's a whole raft of equipment that you could invest in and the courses and then the editing suites and it's and then also the time so if it if it's integral to your craft business exactly perfect Mate, it's because yeah it, it's one of those that I think because we've all got access to picking up a phone and taking a video that it almost feels quite oh well i could just get a deep better camera and it'll be fine and yeah with with lots of training and a bit of a you know and and artistic skill it, it you one could be you know a, a video maker and so on but it you just need to put that time in and you have to think to yourself is that where i really want to spend my time or do i want to spend my time on my craft or do i want to make the video part of my craft which is again could be amazing but then do the do the do the work, do the, do the investment of time and, and skill. Um, yeah, that, that's what I would say. I think we've got time for one more question, Tanvi. Yes, I have one that follows on really nicely from that, actually. Um, is there a benchmark rate per hour? It's going to be quite difficult for hiring a professional. So maybe not a rate, but maybe a range, <laughs> sort of low to mid. Sadly, no. Sadly, there is, there isn't. It is literally a case by case basis. Uh, um, it's one of those questions that I wish existed um, as, a, as an independent filmmaker um, in terms of one of the answers that I wish existed because it's uh, ongoing occurrence from any professional, any individual uh, creative. Well, the filmmaking, like any other creative endeavor, um, is, 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 is based on sort of individual kind of um, own sort of not only not self-worth that's a bit worthy but more of like okay you know what your time is worth you know the, the kit that you're bringing a, uh, along to said shoot and so on and the money that you've invested to get that kit to make the professional video um so it's 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 a very it's nice it's the most annoying answer sadly but i uh, <laughs> but yeah it's literally like a, okay what you really need to think about is really think okay how much money do i have to 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 spend on a video once you know that then you can approach a a a, a videographer filmmaker whatever and say hey um this is all i've got what are you saying and they'll they'll be like uh i'm sorry that is that's not going to work or they might be like well i can't do this but i can do that and so it's it's all a, it's all a negotiation i i, I wouldn't want to start saying i think that it's not the I think in just everything that Carl said today, having that pre-production plan of what you want to do, what you want to achieve, if you have that all really laid out, so you're creating a brief and a plan B brief, and then when you reach out to filmographers, they'll be like, oh, I can do this, but have you thought about that? And then it becomes a collaboration because I think it's not just about employing somebody, it's collaborating with somebody so they truly get that authenticity that Carl's been talking about. And, and that's only going to come with a, a proper collaborative relationship. And that's what you're investing in, which is really exciting when it works. And there's a great uh, film recently produced that Valerie Wartell did with The Professional. And it, it's so plush that um, you, you, that's when she, it really works for her business. So. I think you know that's that's a relationship that's proven to work with the filmographer that she commissioned. So, yeah, that's that's the timing. I could not have put that better myself. Thank you, Caroline. That was wonderful. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I mean, I was I, I was going on. I was, my brain just went to the kind of oh yeah, well, there's no real cost. Collaboration is so because the filmmaker, of course, wants to make good work. They're an artist, you know, for the most part. <laughs> some of them, some of us, uh, most of us. And yeah, you want to make good work. And so that, that only works with the collaboration, with, with good collaboration and being on the same page with the, the subject. So, so yeah, you, you, 
nailed it on the head there. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to have to bring this to a close and thank you so much, Carl, for your time, your insight. Oh, it's been a pleasure. It's been so invaluable. And we will follow up with everyone with all of the links that Carl mentioned. They will be a part of this resource that we will be sharing next week along with the recording. And I'm going to ask my colleague Tanvi to release the poll and ask you to respond to that if you don't mind doing that. The, your feedback's essential. And thank you so much uh, to Crafting Europe for funding these talks and making this possible. Next up is how to work with the media. We've got our guests Imogen Belfield, Jeweler to the Stars, and our own Crafts Magazine editor, Malika Bing, um, joining the, us together uh, on the 30th of June at one o'clock. If you haven't got your tickets now, uh, do visit our Crafts Council website um, for details and bookings uh, uh, for that. But um, otherwise, thank you again, Carl. And um, thank you very much. I'm going to ask uh, Tanvi to uh, bring this webinar to a close. Thank <laughs> you.